Yo, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dan, aka Ajob. I'm pretty guys, our week 10 matchup here. The Minnesota Vikings are taking on the Anaheim Farfetch'd and Coach Link's Forte. We got an epic matchup here for week 10. I'm really excited about it actually. Uh, so far, the Anaheim Farfetch'd are five wins and four losses. We are sitting at a nice little seven wins and two losses. Best record in differential in the league, and I want to keep that up, man. As I mentioned, the team builder. Definitely go check out the team builder, guys. You definitely want to see what sets we're bringing, why we're bringing, what I'm predicting him to bring, and so on and so forth. And of course, if you're enjoying this season, you're hyped for this video, show some love with that like button down below, and definitely make sure you guys subscribe if you're new. 1,500 likes would be amazing. We are going to be potentially, most likely, facing a Celestila, so I wanted to know what your favorite Ultra Beast was in the comments section below, and do you hope that there's more Ultra Beasts and Ultra and moon there's a chance i don't know but we'll see let me know what your thoughts are with all of that and wbe world battle entertainment my league is going to be starting very soon the draft will actually be tomorrow as of the day this is going up so sunday this coming sunday will be the wbe draft uh you know we'll be breaking down all the picks and stuff like that we got 12 awesome coaches i'm really excited about it i'll give you guys more details in a short video uh you probably already would have seen it i guess but i haven't recorded it yet so you'll see that short video talking about the draft stream and then i'll do a draft breakdown and all that good stuff so should be a lot of fun but let me get connected here with links i'm excited for this match man he's a cool dude and i'm excited it should be a lot of fun let's make it happen all right guys we are rid of the rock here against the anaheim farfetch let's find out exactly what team he's gonna be bringing i know we're gonna see celesteela i think we'll see sylveon there's a lot of great pokemon like gray areas in terms of what he could bring i might see the electivire we might see the haunter it really depends on what he thinks is gonna be best and what he thinks i'm gonna bring you know i tend to have been bringing a lot of the same pokemon every single week uh which is funny the one week that we our match got canceled i brought gorgias don fan like a bunch of different stuff but it just has so happened that i've I, you know i build a team that i think is gonna give me the best matchup so even if i bring the same stuff like I'm always trying to build the best matchup so we'll see what uh, what he's gonna bring here and we'll see how it goes down I don't really have any dedicated plans uh, he does bring Kecleon which leads me to believe that that is gonna be his uh, his stealth rocker so that's something to note Kecleon uh, Kecleon could actually be kind of annoying too but uh, we should be able to beat it down. Uh, it does not bring the Haunter, though. It does bring the Glalie, Mega Glalie. So that's a big threat, obviously, Mega Glalie. Um, but I think we can work around it. Obviously, Celesteela is a problem. So I think I got everything there. He's got Glalie, which obviously can hazard stack me, too. And then he's got... Uh, he didn't bring Salamence, but he brought... Kecleon, which is a Pokemon that I know pretty well. So, um, in terms of my leads here, I do kind of like the opportunity of leading with Beedrill, just because it guarantees that I can get a U-turn off or a knockoff off or threaten something immediately, even if it is something like the Kecleon. I don't think Kecleon can one-shot Beedrill with um, with Sucker Punch, but I do want to check that. How much time do I have? I have 45 seconds. So, knockoff would do a lot. Sucker Punch would do a lot, but I don't think it would one-shot me. It actually could if he was life orb if he was life orb it could um so b drill is an option um i do like i do like the b drill lead i think that that's not a terrible idea for momentum um just to get a big hit off on something and i actually like the primarina lead too i kind of like the primarina lead um do i need primarina otherwise he could also lead electivire so we do have to be cautious there i think i'm gonna lead primarina just because i need to decide something here and i think getting a big hit off on something could be really useful uh, and it matches up relatively well against kecleon I'm, I'm most likely faster and i could try to start to dent his team and break through his team early on because even if he's like got freeze dry on his uh his glalie it's not too big of a deal i know i can at least take one with Primarina and um, you know it's like without Keldeo and stuff Primarina is not like and, and no Salamence stuff it's not like this is the biggest thing but he's gonna lead Father here which is gonna be the Nido King actually so I feel like we had a similar matchup like this at one point in this season where Nido King faced off against Primarina and uh, Sludge Wave does knock me out if he's if he's sheer force so i do have to be kind of cautious there i think i actually have to go into into bronzong here right away just to be totally safe i don't think he's gonna flamethrower um i could also make like a really bold prediction and just attack but he also might switch out too so i think i'm gonna make the safe play and go into bronzong uh he could have flamethrower but i think just playing it safe here is probably the best way to go permarina obviously has some usefulness in this match so um you know it doesn't this isn't exactly the best lead matchup um, yeah, so I'm just gonna make a swap in a Bronzong and kind of see what kind of Nidoking this is. Will he just set up a Stealth Rock on me? Will he go for the Sludge Wave and try to knock me out? Will he just switch out, fearing me to be like an Assault Vest variant, not wanting to lose his Nidoking? So like I brought Assault Vest sets before, um, and Nidoking doesn't necessarily one-shot me. Um, 
It really depends on what he brought and stuff. So he doesn't, he's not, and he could be a Z Crystal user too, which is something to keep in mind, but he doesn't necessarily like one shot me. So it's kind of like a very big 50 50 to start off this match. He's gonna switch out so he's faster than us. He's gonna go right into his Alphonse, which is gonna be what? The Celestila? Yeah, so he goes right into Celestila here, which is fine. So I could have been able to get a big hit off, but that's not gonna be the case. Um, I'm gonna get my Bronzong in here. Bronzong typically can't do much to Celesteela, but this is an opportunity for me to simply set up my Stealth Rocks. So I think that's exactly what I'm gonna do here, is just go for Stealth Rocks. Um, you know, I don't have the best switch into this thing, unfortunately, but getting up a Stealth Rock here is gonna be really nice. Um, you know, he's gonna actually switch out again and go into his Nido King. So he just goes right back into King, uh, which is fine because even if he's like Fire MZ, I think I could probably take the hit anyway at this point. Like Bronzong versus Nido King, I don't... I don't really think he would be like Fire MZ. Like Earthquake definitely two shots him. Uh, let me see, Flamethrower. Flamethrower could, like yeah, Inferno Overdrive doesn't one shot me and like uh, Fire Blast is a little riskier. That's not gonna one shot me either if I remove the Life Orb. Yeah, Inferno Overdrive doesn't, like I could definitely take a hit. So I think I'm gonna just go for the Earthquake here and just get big damage off on this thing. Let's go for that. Let's go for the big Earthquake. He's going to set up a Stealth Rocks here, so maybe thinking I was going to switch out. But I'll get big damage off on Edo King. Uh, big Earthquake coming off here. This should do over half, depending on his spread, unless he's like super defensive. It does do over half, which is nice. And that actually puts him in what I'm expecting, a Gyro Ball range. Um, I mean, I could take a big hit here, or I could choose to just get the kill. Gyro Ball should be able to kill from this range. So I think I'm going to go for the Gyro Ball. If he was modest with the Gyro Ball kill, I don't want to... Miss out on a kill here. Yeah, Gyro Ball looks like it's going to kill. Um, is there any reason for me? Yeah, let's see here. I could also predict and go into Latias and go for a Psy Shock too. Would be another play. And keep Bronzong super healthy. Like, Latias has some usefulness, but it's not, like, super imperative. Let's go into Latias predicting the potential. Um, he's going to switch, so he doesn't want to die. And he goes out in Envy which is gonna be the Kecleon. Okay, so it's a little bit frustrating because now we're threatened with knockoff. We're definitely threatened with a knockoff here. So I have to make a tough decision. Do I, do I stay in? Like I definitely can't one shot a Kecleon with Latias. Like I definitely can't. And he can definitely do a lot of damage to me. Like he can definitely put in the work against me. So I think I need to switch out here. I think Primarina is probably my best bet. I, I might take a knockoff, but I think going into Primarina here makes a lot of sense because then I can fire off a Scald and I'm I'm dealing with a potential burn against Celesteela and things like that. So we'll see what he ends up doing here, but he probably knock off. He's gonna fake out actually. So interesting to see the fake out, but with all the speed I have, I'm not super surprised. I should be faster as well. So this gives me an opportunity to fire off a big Scald I can also opt to Hydro Pump. He very well could be, um, he very well could be Assault Vest. So we have to kind of keep that in mind. Um, hydro Pump does do a lot. I feel like I should just go for the Hydro Pump. Yeah, let's just go for the Hydro Pump. If he's Assault Vest, it's, it's probably like a two hit KO anyway, or pretty darn close. And if he's Assault Vest, then he doesn't have Recover anyway. So let's go for the Hydro Pump. We do connect it. There's a Choice Specs Hydro Pump here, so this is going to do a tremendous amount. That looks to be some sort of bulk investment. He does go for Rock Slide and turn into a Rock type, uh, which is pretty interesting. Maybe expecting me to switch out there. But um, even, like, I resist... Uh, yeah, I'm just going to Hydro Pump again. I resist the potential um, Sucker Punch, so really Shadow Sneak would be his only priority option that can do a lot to me. And he doesn't really have a good switch in a Hydro Pump aside from maybe Sylveon. Because even Celesteela gets two shots. So Primarina has been a very interesting Pokemon to use this season. I've been getting, you know, I've been using it like super offensively, but for good reason. It's a great wall breaker. So, you know, we could definitely put some pressure on his team. Um, he has a tough decision to make. Does he let his Kecleo go, Kecleon go down or does he make a swap? Like Kecleon's actually kind of a problem. So I'll be glad if I can get rid of this thing. And I've also weakened the Nido King quite a bit. So he's gonna switch out here. So something's taking a Hydro Pump. It's gonna be Alphonse, which is gonna be the um, the Celesteela, but I don't think that's taking two, two Hydro Pumps. And I'll get to find out whether or not, please don't miss, sweet. I'll get to find out kind of what set he is. Yeah, that's not a Salt Vest, that's for sure. He may be an offensive set with speed. Um, 
I don't know. Does Giga Drain one shot me here? Like, is he going to be faster than me for one? And two. Because Celesteel is naturally faster, but it depends on if he has speed investment. And if he were to Giga Drain me, like, would he knock me out? Like, Heavy Slam definitely knocks me out right now. But I've weakened him to the point where I feel like it's worth just clicking Hydro Pump again. Yeah, I'm just gonna click Hydro Pump again. We'll see if we're faster. We are faster, and I hit another Hydro Pump. And we just got rid of the biggest threat that I was worried about, which was the Celesteela. So that's huge for me. So, uh, Primarina kills Celesteela with Hydro Pump. And Nido King sitting at like 40%. Uh, Kecleon sitting at like 40%. And Celesteela's gone. So, this is really, really good. This is like a great start for us. Uh, Primarina Hydro Pump specs. I think this is the first time I'm using Hydro Pump this season. I typically go with Scald and Moonblast, but I need the extra damage output on Celesteela in case he was offensive. And naturally, Celesteela does outspeed Primarina, but I have just a tiny bit of speed. Um, I actually went a little above my normal speed creep. I went with 36 speed EVs this week. So I'm assuming Lynx probably put like 12 or 16 or maybe 20 speed EVs into his Celesteela. So we probably just got above him by one point because he probably speed crept me and just made sure. But uh, here comes Sylveon which is obviously a pretty big threat uh, from an offensive perspective. I do want to just run a quick calc to see how much does Primarina Aqua Jet do to Nido King to determine whether or not it's worth keeping this thing around. Aqua Jet does about 30%, so it might actually be worth it. Um, and making the switch into Bronzong here, because typically, yeah, typically he can't really do anything to me, and I think keeping the priority option is nice. So I'm going to make the swap into Bronzong here. Um, which does threaten this thing with Heavy Slam. Really all he can do is wish, he can protect, he can go for all sorts of stuff, but he's not really in a situation to wish against me, I don't think. So he's gonna go for the Shadow Ball and make the prediction of the Bronzong, so great play on his part. Um, and that does a tremendous amount of damage, actually, uh, which really puts me in a tough spot. I have to kinda, and I get a special defense drop, so that's kind of a bummer. Um, so Bronzong versus Sylveon, was that choice spec Shadow Ball? Or what was that? That did about half. If he doesn't have specs, I don't think he can do that much to me. Yeah, it's close. I'm gonna assume he's specs. I'm gonna assume he's specs. So like, I don't have the best switches to this thing. So I'm gonna go into my Umbreon. I'm gonna assume that's a specs. He's gonna switch out. I oh, know I switched out, <laughs> just kidding. Um, I used to call my Sylveon Bell. So let's see what he's gonna do, or Bella. He goes for the Shadow Ball again. I can't really tell if he's Specs or not. I think he is, though. It's close. Like, it was pretty close. Uh, typically, Umbreon is faster, though, so I can actually pretty freely go for a Baton Pass here. So I'm just going to Baton Pass. Unless he's, like, super speed investment. If he knocks out Umbreon, it's not a big deal. It gives me a free switch into my Beedrill, which now can freely fire off Poison Jabs as he doesn't have a Celesteel any longer. So it's not really too big of a deal. It's not really that big of a deal. So, uh, Bronzong is still worth keeping around as well. But like I said, if he's if he is Specs, which it feels like he is, he's either like Specs or like Pixie Plate, or um, like he's definitely offensive. I could tell you that. I could tell you that. So he is gonna switch out. So I get momentum here, which is super nice. And he goes into Envy. I don't know these nicknames. Here comes Kecleon. Okay, so that's no big deal. Um, this is a pretty good opportunity, I think, for me to go into my Tapu Koko. Because even if he Shadow Sneaks me, like a Dazzling Gleam should easily knock him out at this range. Um, and Koko isn't as um, as important at this point in the game. Like, a, I would imagine a Dazzling Gleam does knock him out. Yeah, it should. Does it, though? Does Dazzling Gleam one-shot him at this point? Or do I have to go into something else? Um, I mean, I can easily go into, like, how much does Shadow Sneak do to Primarina? Can Primarina live a Shadow Sneak? Because we're going to take Stealth Rock's damage. He's not Life Orb, so I, I could actually re remember that. Shadow Sneak does, like, 25%. I'm sitting at 80 out of 183. Uh, we could just pressure him with Scald again, though. So that 43%, so we lose 12. Yeah, so he actually cannot one shot me with shadow sneak at this point so i'm gonna go into primarina knowing that i can freely fire off scalds now because even something like sylveon doesn't want to take it so i'm gonna just freely fire off a scald here he can shadow sneak but it's not going to be enough because i'm sitting at 58 out of 183. uh he does have fake out though so fake out plus shadow sneak may be close 
it's gonna be darn close actually whether he does it but Primarina has kind of ran its course anyway and I just don't want a chance um, not knocking him out here I know he's got fake out I know he's got rock slide he's gonna fake out he may not even have shadow sneak so it puts me at 27 out of 183 which does mean we're at 14% if he has shadow sneak he probably knocks me out actually like sucker punch won't but shadow sneak likely will I'm just gonna chance it I'm gonna go for the scald here there's no point in switching out now he does have the sucker punch can I live it can I live it we'll see we're at like 14% so oh we live on two that's clutch man good job Primarina good live there yeah, we knock him out. That was really big, too. Primarina kills Kecleon with Scald. That was big. Uh, that helped me out because I, I basically saved a lot of damage on something else. Because something else is going to have to take a hit from that thing, like the priority. But we get rid of the Kecleon. Um, basically, what I need to do now is I'm pretty sure he's going to be Choice Scarf Electivire. So we do have to keep that in mind. He may bring it in right now in Volt Switch and just get momentum, but I'm pretty sure that's a choice Scarf Electivire. Um, so we do have to really keep that in mind. Luckily, you know, I have my Umbreon still. I have, you know, a Tapu Koko. I don't want to set the Alleged Terrain for him just yet, though. And I have a choice Scarf Latias, which can most likely one-shot him with a Draco Meteor. So we have that going for us as well. Um, so it's just going to be a matter. And I, I lose out on my Aqua Jet, but um, that's okay. Yeah, I'm going to lose that on Aqua Jet, but I got rid of the Kecleon, so that worked out. So what is he going to bring in? Nidoking and Sylveon are both... Did I weaken Sylveon? No, I didn't weaken Sylveon, but we know Sylveon is specs. So basically, like, the key is I need to keep, like, as soon as Sylveon hits the field, I get to go into Beedrill and immediately threaten him with Poison Jab. Here comes Gluttony, which is likely to be the Glalie. Okay, so he's going to Mega Evolve his Glalie here, which is fine. He takes a lot of damage. Um, I'm pretty sure Beedrill can easily take, like, this might be time for Beedrill or Coco. One of the two has to probably come in. Um, or I can actually go Umbreon against him in foul play. Either way, I have to go down here, so I'm just going to Scald. I'm choice locked in, so he's going to Mega Evolve. So Glalie's definitely going to knock us out here. Um, so Glalie kills Primarina with, let's see what he goes for. He's going to go for Ice Shard. So he reveals Ice Shard, which I'm actually... He might have thought that I may have had... Um, I don't know. Okay, let me take a look. Because Tapu Koko against Glalie... It's kind of a tough decision. Tapu Koko against Glalie... Like, Thunderbolt does knock him out. But again, I take a big Ice Shard. And I can't really Thunderbolt because of the potential of him switching out. Um... I could go into Umbreon potentially, which Umbreon's kind of good. I can also go into Beedrill. Beedrill's probably the best thing to go into, but the problem with Beedrill is I'm going to take an Ice Shard to the face. Poison Jab definitely knocks him out. Ice Shard does about 50%. I think it's worth going Beedrill here because I can actually just U-turn out too. He'll, he'll hit us and then I can U-turn out and I should... I should be able to, I should be able to come back in and kill the Sylveon, but if I can't, do I lose the game? Probably. Probably. Um, alternatively, I want to keep Honeydew around because I think he's Scarfed. Luna's pretty solid here. I mean, I'm physically defensive against Glalie, and I can always, I can always protect. Like, I can live any hit. I'm going to actually go into Luna here. Because the worst case scenario is he goes into he goes into his Sylveon. And I can always protect to scout out what he's going to go for and then get to switch out. So it's not a huge deal. So I should be able to live any hit from him. I'm going to go for... I can choose to wish. Or I can choose to foul play. I'm going to just go for the foul play. He may go Sylveon. Uh, it's a pretty obvious play, but I've been baton passing on him a bunch. So he may opt not to. The good thing about this is if he switches out... It gives me an opportunity to put him below where he is now, like 50%, which gives me an opportunity to potentially knock him out with Coco D-Gleam, which could be really good. Yeah, Dazzling Gleam has a chance to knock him out. So he's going to go for Frustration here, but I should be able to live this without a problem. And you can see I do live it without a problem, and we're actually sitting at a good amount of health. 
So I could just foul play him and that actually is a huge, huge deal for us because we just weakened him to a very low amount and I can actually wish protect against him now. So I'm gonna just go for the wish. I'm gonna go for the wish and then I can protect on the following turn. It may be a little obvious, but um, it should be pretty solid. Because even if he switches out, I can just protect the Sylveon and determine what he's going to do. And this thing is kind of stuck here. So he may actually, I probably should have protected now that I think about it. Because he's probably going to explode. I should have protected. That was a mis misplay. I should have went for protect. He's probably going to go for the explosion here. I, m I just misplayed pretty big actually. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. I should have protected, but you know what? He knows I have protect, so is he gonna is he gonna scout for that right now though? Like that's the thing, it's kind of mind games. He knows I have protect. So there's a chance he like he doesn't explode. It's like a 50-50. Cause he knows I have protect. I wish I shouldn't have clicked the move so fast because I probably I think protect is the right play right here. Because I think him exploding right now is more likely than him not exploding and predicting my protect. It's kind of like iffy, but explosion definitely kills me, which is kind of annoying. So we do have to kind of keep that in mind. Um, and then I lose one of my main responses to Sylveon. He's gonna go for Super Fang actually, so that's not a big deal. Um, he might've thought I was gonna switch, but now I get to wish and I can protect. And then I think I probably, like, I don't know. He might not even have explosion because he's got Ice Shard, he's got Super Fang, he's got Frustration. Like, what does he have? I'm gonna protect either way. I don't think he's gonna explode. If he had explosion, he would've used it, I think. I think he would've used it. He's gonna frustration again. This is an interesting play, actually. This is a very tough decision to make. I mean, either way, I can knock him out, so that's really not the issue. It's just a matter of does he explode here or not. And if I think he's gonna explode, should I make the switch out? Like, he's got priority. I don't have a priority on anything. I I'm just gonna, like, actually, does explosion kill me at full? Let me see. It's very likely he has, um, explosion may kill me, it may not, it really depends. I'm gonna foul play, if he explodes, then just a good play. He's got Super Fang, okay, cool. I'll take it, man. Uh, Umbreon's gonna pick up this kill for me. Umbreon kills, uh, Glalie with foul play. So, me bringing Umbreon was for two main reasons because I was really nervous about Haunter and actually because of Mega Glalie. I figured a physically defensive Umbreon can actually handle Mega Glalie pretty well. So that works out really well. So now he's got a weakened Nidoking, he's got a Sylveon, and basically we're in a situation where I can bring in my Beedrill and Beedrill immediately threatens everything out. So like, if he's Scarfed Electivire, I just need to keep Latias around. I'm gonna try to keep from setting up the terrain. Um, I can still Dazzling Gleam against things and HP Ice, which is nice. Um, but I want to try to keep from setting up the terrain. So if he goes Sylveon here, I can simply protect. I do believe it's Specs at this point in time. He'll be forced to lock himself into like Hyper Voice or something. And I can, you know, pretty much just make some switches or whatever. So in comes Father, which is the Nido King. Um, I think I'm just going to like protect and then go for foul play. Um... I think I can live any hit unless he's got superpowers. So let's just protect. I lose nothing by protecting here. Nido King doesn't really get boosting moves. He goes for Focus Blast and he, he hits it, but it doesn't do anything. Um, can I live a Focus Blast? Probably not, right? Like, I probably can't. Um, Nido King, Focus Blast. Yeah, I'm sure Focus Blast kills. It definitely kills. Um, so here's a situation where I can definitely go Latias, but I don't think that's the right play because Latias immediately pressures his team with Psy Shock here. And Beedrill comes in and immediately pressures him as well. So we have a couple different routes there to go. Do I need Umbreon for anything? I don't really think I do. And I'm pretty sure Foul Play kills from here. I'm gonna just go for the Foul Play. If he hits the Focus Blast, he kills us. He's gonna switch out, so maybe he predicted me to switch. That's gonna be great though. I get easy damage off on uh, the Sylveon here, which is which is fine. Like, you know, cause even like the Sylveon really can't do anything to me unless he's like a sub calm mind variant, which I don't anticipate him being. Uh, we don't do a ton of damage there, but he's not leftovers. So substitute calm mind seems incredibly unlikely. Um, so I could find out what he wants to lock himself into by going for protect here again. 
So let's see what he's going to do. He has to choose a move. He's probably going to have to Hyper Voice. Which means I could just simply go into my Bronzong. Because Bronzong's usefulness at this point in the match has been kind of dwindled. And we just get a little bit more Stealth Rock damage now on Nido King 2, which is nice. Guaranteeing, uh, you know, like kills with like D-Gleam and stuff. And plus, Sylveon's sitting at like 60% now, so even getting that thing worn down is super nice. It just helps out, allowing me to Psy Shock later. Like, basically, now I can get Latias in and click Psy Shock, and I think we're going to be in decent shape. So we'll see what he locks himself into here. Um, but yeah, Psy Shock is going to do a lot. He goes for Hyper Voice. So, yeah, Psy Shock do does two-shot Electivire as well, so that's really nice to know. Okay, so I think keeping Umbreon is around, around is still worth it because uh, he is going to Hyper Voice me. So pretty sure we just go into Bronzong here. If he wants to make a prediction and switch out, that's totally fine. I lose nothing. But I just actually, I should have Baton Pass. I just misplayed. I should have Baton Pass, but he actually could be faster than us, so never mind. Um, so he probably Hyper Voices here because last time I Baton Pass, so it's kind of tricky. I don't know if he's speed invested or not. Yeah, I think I think actually just hard switching to Bronzong is fine. I just need to get Beedrill in for free. Once Beedrill comes in, I get to click Poison Jab and something dies. Even Nido King dies at this point. I'm pretty sure from Poison Jab. Um, like, it's let's see here. He probably just stays in then. Uh, he does Hyper Voice us. Let's see how much this does. We're at 73. I'm a specially defensive Bronzong. Was that a crit? It wasn't a crit, he just he just does so much. That's so specs. <laughs> definitely specs. Yeah, two poison jabs definitely will knock out um Nido King at this point. Even one might be enough. So I'll just go for the heavy slam. He can knock me out, it makes no difference. He just hyper voices, so that will definitely knock us out. So Sylveon uh, kills Bronzong with hyper voice. Okay, now I pretty much go into B drill. And I just poison jab really. Because what's going to happen is he's going to try to get his, his Electivire in. And I'm pretty sure Electivire is Choice Scarfed. So all I have to do is get my Latias in, which is faster, and he cannot one-shot me. I just do not want to allow... Yeah, I just do not want to allow uh, Electric Terrain to get up at this point in the match. Because that's just going to make the Electivire stronger. He could be like a Rain Dance variant, but either way, Beedrill comes in here. Doesn't have too much of an issue. Gets to Mega Evolve. And I'm pretty sure I can simply um, Poison Jab now. Um, yeah, let's just poison jab because it definitely knocks out this thing. He can go into Nido King, but I don't think Nido King lives the poison jab anyway, and it's not gonna live two poison jabs. So, and at that point, I just need to save, save B drill. I could just sack a number of things until I get B drill back in. So, because Light Devourer doesn't get any priority, and Sylveon dies to B drill either way. And even like Thunderbolt from Coco. I just have to be cautious with how I use Coco. Like I don't want to send it in unless I absolutely have to. But obviously Latias puts in a lot of work here. Just clicking Psy Shock on the fastest thing. Um, I two shot Sylveon entry. So, and if he lock, like I said, if he locks himself in a Hyper Voice, we have options there too. So, yeah, he he pretty much has to go Nido King here and sack it off. But after Stealth Rocks, I don't know if Nido King's living. The Calc says. 21 to 25 on like an offensive Nido King. Um, he could be like a bulkier set, but even if he had Sucker Punch, it's really not a big deal. I don't, I don't think he's gonna have Sucker Punch. Uh, he's gonna stay in here, so we're gonna get the the Poison Jab off and kill his Sylveon, which means after this he likely just goes Electivire. He likely just goes Electivire, which is fine. Um, I think I just let Beedrill go down. Poison Jab will definitely pick up the kill on Sylveon. So B. Kills Sylveon with Poison Jab. So Primarina really put in a lot of work in this match at the beginning. That was big. So Nido King sitting at like 25%. Electivire is at full. It's going to take Rock Sandwich, go down to 88. But the thing is, Electivire, it's got to be Choice Scarfed. It's got to be Choice Scarfed. So I'm just going to let him attack me. Like, I don't even care. Because he pretty much has to lock himself. He like has to go for Volt Switch, I think. Um... Even like, he doesn't even guarantee a kill on me with a lot of things. So he just goes Evire. If he's not Choice Scarf, then I'm faster anyway. So we just win with Beedrill if he's not Scarf. I'm assuming he's Scarf. Like this whole game, I've played that the Electivire is Scarfed. And we have a Latias just for that. So, 
you know, with Psy Shock and stuff. And Evire really doesn't do much to Latias. Like, if he's Scarfed, he'll be forced to lock himself into something like Ice Punch, which which is nice because I still have my Umbreon, um, you know, and Coco's still at full. So, um, I don't know what his out is here, but I have Drill Run as well for the potential Nido King. So, if that's kind of his play, it's not a big deal. Um, you know, U turn. I can actually just knock off the Nido King if he goes Nido King here. That way, I don't have to risk. Um, unless he's Z Crystal, actually. But I think, I think not. Yeah, knock off's still the play. So if he goes Nido King, I knock off. He goes Electivire, I poison jab just to stop him from potentially trying to um, Z Rain Dance or something. So he does go into his Electivire here. So unfortunately, B Drive is likely going to just go down here because I, I think I just need. It's my best interest to just go for the poison jab. So that's what I'm going to go for. Just to keep him from trying to set up on us. That's really the only way we lose this game, in my opinion. Because Coco and Latias are faster than Nido King. We know it's a Rocks variant. So it's really just a matter of what this Electivire set is. So, either way. Electivire is such a cool design, though. Always, like, an amazing design. I wish it was a little bit better competitively. But he's actually not going to be Choice Scarf. So after all that, he ends up not being Scarfed. And he's not bulky at all. So Beedrill's going to pick up that kill there. And it looks like Beedrill's on his way to a nice little sweep. Uh, kills Electivire with P-Jab. And basically, here comes the Nido King now, which at this point in the match does not live any hits. Um, I just get to knock off. There's really no reason not to go for that. A uh, Drill Run would guarantee, but Drill Run can miss, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Drill Run can miss. So I'm going to go for the knockoff because I'm pretty sure it should be able to hit the... Hit the KO here. Uh, if he's holding a Z Crystal, there's a chance it doesn't, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna be okay. Uh, he's actually Choice Scarf Nido King with. Wow, dude, he was Choice Scarf Nido King with Stealth Rocks. I have seen it all, man. I have really seen it all. Hey, props to him. Props to him. I actually did not expect that. He was Choice Scarf. So B kills uh, Nido King with um, knockoff. Yeah, he couldn't lock himself into Earth Power there because I had a Latias, so he had to go for Sludge Wave there and just hope for the best. But uh, we're going to pick up a nice win there. I believe that was a, what was that, a 3-0 or 4-0? 4-0, actually. Uh, Tapu Coco never saw the field. Umbreon put in the work. Latias didn't have to do anything. Beedrill picking up three kills there at the end, which was super awesome. So Beedrill gets to show off its awesome skills. And, you know, MVP in this match, like, Beedrill getting those kills, but Primarina really put in the work, man. It put in so much work. It got rid of the two big threats that I had to worry about. The Celesteela primarily for Beedrill, and also the Kecleon, which turned out to be kind of an issue because of the priority issues. Shadow Sneak and Fake Out, um, obviously. So, very cool match, man. Just props to Lynx. It was a great battle, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Dan. I'm the coach of your Minnesota Bike of Alts, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.